welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Bella Bar. I wanted to talk about, um, what I was thinking about going over was about the python, the spirit of the python. And I was going to go over their signs and symptoms of this particular spirit. The symptoms and his traits of the spirit spirit of the python and the spirit of the python and the leviathan are two different spirits okay the leviathan is an is a water spirit but the spirit of the python is a snake okay all right i wanted to talk about the symptoms so the symptoms you're going to experience is uh lethargic you're going to be really tired uh go through cycles of defeat in your life the bouts of hopelessness poverty interference with opportunities a sense of powerlessness a sense of suffocation it's gonna feel like a snake when he wraps around you you're gonna feel like you're paralyzed you know a sense of limitation a feeling of constriction a feeling trapped feeling barricaded feeling paralyzed unmotivated uh, procrastination lack of focus lack of ambition aimless loss of vision that was a biggie for me when um, I was being attacked by the spirit of the python. I lost my vision, um, direction, indifference, apathy, consistent weariness, um, suicidal thoughts, isolation, depression, uh, the inability to pray, inability to worship, and the inability to study the word of God. It's going to try to choke your prayer life away, you guys. It's going to try to take and squeeze your worship life and make you not want to read the Bible. Uh, other things that you will feel is you feel inferior to peers. You feel plagued with inadequacies, you know, because you know how the enemy likes to make you feel like nothing. You dislike and you loathe yourself. You feel like you are a disappointment, you know, you feel people think you're a loser. You oftentimes don't feel loved. You know God loves you, you know that, right? But sometimes you just can't relate. You are talented and intelligent, but overlooked by employers. You do great things that don't amount to much, and you strive to put your gifts to use, but don't get very far. Does that sound familiar? Those are indicators of spirits of the python. And I want to tell you what how his strategies are. This is what the python uses. These are the types of ways python gets his hold on his victims, okay? And he, he usually hangs from the rafters, you know? A good bit of his approach is through the people in our lives, beginning at our birth. The more ground he has in their lives, especially in families, the more capable he is to inflict the following types of ongoing violations which strips us to one degree or another or our sense of well-being, hope, trust, identity. These make us susceptible to, to gradually being driven into above state of condition, bound in python chains, you know. Repetition rejection, belittling spirits, controlling rigid spirits. You know how I always say that demons stalk in gangs. So this is what's going to be coming along in this gang, okay? That bounds the python chains around you. You know, belittling spirits, controlling spirits, rigid spirits, intimidating spirits, manipulative spirits, condescending spirits, critical squashing spirits, not being loved spirits, lack of affirmation spirits, not being believed in, believed or being despised, being disappointed, not being valued, neglected, abuse verbal, sexual, emotional, mental, physical, spiritual, repetitive loss, repetitive violation, repetitive injustice, repetitive trauma, destruction. Remember, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. After you put on your armor, in spirit warfare circles, we talk a lot about the armor of God. And some of us even symbolically get dressed in our armor every day. In our, like we, we focus on our armor 
like in our minds. That's how I do it when I'm praying to God and I'm focusing on wearing my armor for God. And I, I like pretend and I can see it in my mind on. We've memorized Ephesians 6, 10 through 17, but a freedom key is in verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and in supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. If this is mine. That's right. Wearing heavy battle armor is not enough without prayer and the right kind of prayer. Remember, Paul was on his way to the house of prayer when the python attacked. Python doesn't want you in the place of prayer, in the presence of God, because when you are engaging in spirit-led prayer, you're doing damage to the kingdom of darkness. The enemy knows that your authority in prayer in Christ's name is what sets you free from his oppression and sets others around you free. Don't you want to be free? Scripture makes it clear. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chain were loosened and the keeper of the prison awakening from sleep seeing the prison doors open supposing the prisoners had fled drew his sword and was about to kill himself but Paul called with a loud voice saying do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Acts 16, 25-28 Although reciting prayers from a book may push back darkness for a moment, ultimately, that spiritual warfare strategy isn't going to deliver you and keep you free from the Python's grip. Freedom from Python demands a deeper intercession, and it starts with repentance and works its way into Travailing in prayer by the leading of the Spirit of God. In Romans 8, 26, 27. We need to pray to the righteousness Lord who has cut in pieces the cord of the wicked. See Psalms 129, 4. That the python has coiled around us. We need to repent for our sins and the sins of our city that have allowed Python a stronghold so God can surround us with songs of deliverance in His presence. Psalms 32, we have authority in Christ to cut in pieces His coiling spirit, but again, it often takes travailing prayer with the Spirit of God to free the body from the head of the snake in a religion, um, I mean in a region. And characteristics of the Python spirit Python is a territorial spirit that gathers and communicates information about the destiny, the activity, the calling, the anointing, the mission, and the level of spirit authority in the life of those in its territory. It guards its territory. And Python's goal is to broadcast information, to mark people for demonic pressure, and to squeeze out unwanted and threatening ministry in a city or region, especially if it is a apostolic level authority that's coming into the city. So Python's goal is to gather information through the demonic worldwide wicked web, such as lielessness, etc. And Python spirit desires to work through people and give the appearance of revelation, discernment, prophecy, and the ability to tell the future, to be accurate outside of the church, and it manifests in new age channeling, fortune telling, horoscope, etc. And Python collects the information, announces it to stir up opposition that squeezes people out of the move of God. You see how he squeezes people? And Python does not affirm ministry about raising 
an alarm waving a red flag to bring to bear a demonic resistance that would squeeze off the prophetic destiny and kingdom potential and the results as quickly as possible but python's fortune telling aspect of the python spirit is real reality the tracking of a person through demonic spirits and the sharing of information along with manipulation of ideas thoughts and events to appear able gifted to predict future to create relationship and dependency fear slavery manipulation and financial dependency like a fortune teller you know how they hang on to they and they say you have curses and and they keep making you pay and pay and pay you know python works through lies and manipulation information and does not have a revelation knowledge we need to watch what we say and especially what we say about other believers because that becomes demonic pronouncements. In the book of 1 Corinthians 2.6, the python stirs up and connects itself in church members as well as in the community, city, and state with, you know, ambition, greed, gossip, rebellion, ungodly authority, control, slander, lies, manipulation, brutal, um, being unmerciful towards godly leaders, constricting tightening shutting down it loves to hang around money and manipulation of authority and python man manifests itself and manipulates and perversion of authority with fear control of money in an attempt to uh, apply pressure to an apostic prophetic ministry some church boards squeeze the life out of their leaders python spirit tries to pressure squeeze push people out of a life-giving apostolic uh, ministry to stop a move of God in a region of city or city um, that's how it works and the other thing too I noticed if you have dreams about snakes when I was being attacked by the spirit of the Python and I had to get deliverance for that I had dreams of a snake wrapping around itself around me and I noticed that I couldn't like understand the Bible it was like I could one minute and then I couldn't and then it started attacking my vision so I couldn't read the Bible. And, and I started going through like mostly all the stuff that was talking about how I went through it in my church. It, I mean it's like, you know, this spirit likes to hide in the rafters of church, that's for sure. Because I had an issue with some of the people that I went to a church with and they started gossiping about me and saying things that were not very, they were not true, that were not godly at all, like towards a, a sister. And they had no business, like, you know, backbiting and, and gossiping. And, you know, because that's, that's ungodly, you know. And that's slander and lies and manipulation. And, you know, and the enemy's using those people of God at that church to, you know, go against myself, you know. And that's how it works, too. You'll, like, deal with a lot of, like, members doing that in church. Real common in the church, you guys. But I'm telling you, when you guys are having dreams about snakes... That's a big red flag, too, that you got something going on with the, uh, the spirit of the python. And, oh, yeah, I had a friend, some a sister wanted me to uh, interpret her dream, and she was telling me about this dream she had. She said that uh, she had a purse, and there was a snake in it. And um, I knew right away, because she's in Africa, and uh, when you have dreams about snakes being in your purse, that means, like, a witch or a sagoma or a, some kind of witch witch doctor or uh, like somebody in Santeria put uh, like a spell on you to where they put a snake and it, like it's a spiritual snake and it's in your purse and what it does is it drains all your wealth and uh, drains all your wealth and all the, your wealth that's being drained goes to them so whatever it drains from you goes to them okay so they're draining all her wealth. And I asked her, I said, has somebody put a, a spell on you? And right away she knew what I was talking about because she goes, yes, a lady put a spell on me. I said, well, then that's who put the spell on you. You need to get delivered from that. Um, she put a spell on you. So I'm just giving you an example. Anyways, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.